Hey Canada, how y'all doing? Pretty exciting episode uh, coming up. Thursdays are usually pretty crazy too. Like, do you think Trudeau's going to show up? Who knows? Like, hard to tell with this guy. He's a slacker, right? There's no doubt about that. So anyways, the first thing that we're going to do today uh, is a little... Oh, we've got a, a crooked camera. Sorry, gang. First thing we're going to do is show you a little bit about uh, how to get free memberships. Like, this is it. Like, why would I give out free memberships? Uh, there's many reasons why, but I want to show you how to be able to accept them. And there's other things that you need to accept these for. Hey, Boomer Media, what's up? Michael, Wastelands, Angry Canadian, Mr. Pickles, Patty Zadow, Clint, what's up gang? Kirk, if you're still around, what's up? Sheila, good afternoon. Anyhow, we're going to drop into this. Sorry, gang. Uh, yeah, so so what we do is we go to join and go to gift settings and make sure that it's on. That's it. Then that's all you need. And then you'll get uh, free memberships when they're given out. That should be easy enough for people to... Um, Navigate, I hope, I hope that helps because I don't know what else to do because I know that there's a number of people that should have been uh, members by now, like should have been gifted, but they must not have that setting adjusted. I know I had to change it myself. Um, so anyhow, what are we going to do next? Let's just watch a couple of videos while we wait for question period, which is about 10 minutes out. Um, I've got this really cool one I made this morning. I like it personally, and I like this politician. So you tell me in the comments, uh, in, in the chat, if you like this guy, Jamal Giovanni. He's bringing something original to Parliament, guys. Um, I just like him. So let, let me show you a little bit of uh, Jamal and... See what you think for yourself. Bonnie, I'm a member for the electoral district of Durham. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, it is an honor to present to you Jamil Giovanni, the honorable member for Durham. Just wait till you hear the this oath, guy talk. Signed the roll awesome. and now takes the right to claim his seat. <laughs> honorable member, take his seat. Hey gang, what's up? Just Aaron right here, Question Period Canada. So I had no idea what was going on the other day when they were introducing a new member to the House of Parliament. But my oh my, this Jamil Giovanni, he is something else, guys. In his introduction to the house that he was making on behalf of himself, it was incredible, man. Let's check out this video. We get to know him pretty well. I get the feeling politicians are hard to trust. I like this guy, though. Let's take a look at what he's saying. See if it makes any sense to you. I don't remember for Durham. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I rise in the chamber today as Canada's newest Member of Parliament, elected to represent the riding of Durham. And I have a very clear message to deliver on behalf of my community in Durham. 
We are tired of the Prime Minister's broken promises. We are tired of the Prime Minister promising to fix this and fix that. And in return, what we receive is a life that is harder and more expensive. Madam Speaker, we believe that Canadians deserve better. And we believe that the topic of debate today, Pharmacare, is just the latest example of the Prime Minister promising big things only to disappoint the people of Canada. Now, I put my name on a ballot and I wanted this job as Member of Parliament because despite the Prime Minister's best efforts, I am optimistic and hopeful about the future of this country. I believe that once we have a new leader in this great land, we will see brighter days ahead. And my optimism does not come from these big deficits or these big budget announcements. My optimism comes from my knowledge of the people of Canada and the people of Durham. My optimism comes from people like Kirk Kemp, who runs one of the biggest and most important agricultural businesses in Canada, Algoma Orchards. And as he becomes more successful in his business, he only gives back more to our community, supporting initiatives like the Bowmanville Hospital redevelopment. My optimism comes from people like Dr. Khan Chandra, a dentist in Curtis, Ontario, who has built a tremendous business, provides for his family, and gives back to our community as a connector for Durham's growing Tamil community. And my optimism comes from Kim and Leon Morrow over on Taunton Road East in Oshawa, who scrape together every spare dollar they can find in every spare moment to provide guidance and mentorship to young men and women who may otherwise fall into the pitfalls that await struggling youth. But Kim and Leon have their backs, and that is why I'm hopeful about the future of this country. A little bit of hope. You see, Madam Speaker, I'm very honored to stand here in this beautiful building, and I appreciate the chance to dress up in a suit and a tie, but my heart was not shaped in places like this. My heart was shaped by people like my grandfather, Robert McFarlane, rest in peace. My grandfather, who worked as a school custodian for decades in the Toronto District School Board, a man who swept the floors and mopped the floors, who kept the classrooms tidy, who locked up at the end of the night so that children had a place to learn and teachers had a place to work. And I carry his story with me. I come into this job very much a servant, like my grandpa. I am here to protect what makes this country special, to protect the rights and freedoms of Canadians, to make sure that this country continues to be a place where people from all over the world can come and find a better life. People like my grandpa who came here from Scotland, my grandmother who came here from Ireland, and my father who came here from Kenya. Now, I am aware that there is a liberal playbook that gets used against people who disagree with this Prime Minister. A playbook that likes to marginalize and vilify anyone who has the audacity to stand up and say what is happening in this country right now is not right. And that playbook the Prime Minister likes to use, likes to cast people who disagree with him as racists. And I would be welcoming the Prime Minister to try that with me. You know, based on our history, I don't think that's going to go so well for him. But I also believe that he is completely out of touch with the needs and desires, the hopes and dreams of our very diverse country and the diverse communities like the one I represent in Durham. He's welcome to take his claims that people who disagree with him are racist to my African father and see how that goes for him. He also uses this liberal playbook to marginalize and vilify Canadians who disagree with him by calling those of us who believe in traditional family values bigots. And I say to him, come to my riding, my diverse riding in Durham, and try that on us, where we have Christians and Muslims, Sikhs, Hindus, and Jews living together, all people who believe that mothers and fathers matter. He's welcome to try that with us. And I know his liberal playbook, also likes to say that people who disagree with him don't care about the working class or don't care about vulnerable people. And I don't think that's going to work on me either. 
I am not a trust fund baby. Like most people in this country, I have clawed and I have scraped and worked hard for everything that I have. I don't think the Prime Minister can say the same thing. And the reality is this. He's welcome to try that message on people like my mom. She'd love to have a conversation with him. A woman who raised three children by herself. 60 years old, 68 years old, sorry, sorry mom. Uh, continues, <laughs> continues to work hard every day because she cannot afford to retire in this NDP liberal economy. The liberal playbook is not going to work. They can try their greatest hits. Tune up the guitar. <laughs> Tune up the banjo. The greatest hits aren't hitting anymore. And I'm here to deliver that message very, very clearly on behalf of my community in Durham and anyone else in this great country who is unhappy with what is happening and frustrated to feel like they are not able to say what is happening in their hearts and their minds, do not feel validated and affirmed by the reality they experience, what's not up, being echoed what's by up, many Jack? of the institutions across this country who have bought into a narrative that simply does not reflect reality. Now, with the remainder of my time, I'd like to also deliver a message to any young men and young women across this country who might hear my words. My presence in this chamber is a glitch in the system. This is a, listen to this piece. I'm not supposed to be here. When I was 15 years old, I failed the Ontario literacy test. I was labeled illiterate by the Ontario education system. But I'm here. At the age of 30, I was diagnosed with stage four cancer. I sat in a recliner with an IV in my arm pumping my body with chemotherapy drugs. I laid on a hospital bed as radiation lasers ran along my spine for months. But I'm here. I took on woke censorship from corporate Canada, looked him dead in the eye, and I'm here. And I've been the subject of hit piece after hit piece from liberal news media. And guess what? I'm here. Yeah. The, the reality is that many young men and young women are facing a variety of challenges across this country right now, some of whom are facing things that I can't even fathom. But as long as I stand in the House of Commons, as long as I'm honored to call myself a member of Parliament, I hope that I can be a walking, talking reminder that you should never give up. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on your family. Don't give up on your community. Well, you have to remember what he's saying. And don't give up on this country. Hear these words, guys. And as long as I'm here, I won't give up on them either. Yeah. Thank you. So, so Jamil Giovanni is, is going to certainly be wrap up of that video. And we don't need to bore you with that right now. You've got enough of me um, at the moment. So we're going to jump into a uh, question period because that should be uh, ready to queue up now. And it is. Uh, we're pretty close. We're pretty close, guys, to being ready to go. Just one moment. And then we're probably like five minutes out from the actual question period really starting up. Here we go. Hey everybody, what's up? This is the live soap opera. This is the real reason that we come here. Streets. It's time Let's to get tough happening. on violent repeat offenders and secure our borders. Yeah. The honorable member from Steveston, Richmond East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As Sikh Heritage Month celebrations continue all April, Vasaki night at BC Play Stadium was packed with amazing performances by anthem singer Juggy Bajwa, legendary singer Jazzy B, and finally our Whitecaps beating Toronto FC 4-0. 
Before the match, I had the opportunity to participate in a kickoff message with Whitecaps legend Carl Valentine and young heroes Malia and Noah Kamar, encouraging fans to register as organ donors. Malia and Noah were chosen as Whitecaps kid captains through their work to raise organ donor awareness with BC Transplant in memory of their mother and healthcare worker, Anju, a dear friend who saved eight lives by donating her organs. As one of the thousands of fortunate Canadians to have access to great medical care and a donor, I encourage all Canadians to learn and promote organ donor awareness among their friends and family. I wish this House will join me to recognize the efforts of BC Transplant, the Kamar family, Vancouver Whitecaps, and all volunteers and all staff who work collaboratively. Together we can build healthier communities and save lives. The Honourable Member from Edmonton Strathcona. Mr. Speaker, today I stand to offer my sincere congratulations to those members of the Inter-Council Network of Provincial voice, and Regional right? Councils for Global Cooperation. They are celebrating an important milestone of 50 years. The ICN is a coalition of eight provincial and regional councils. The ICN represents hundreds of Canadian organizations in every region and every province from coast to coast to coast. The first council was in my home province of Alberta, the Alberta Council for Global Cooperation, which began engaging Canadians and supporting international development operations in 1973. The Manitoba and Saskatchewan Councils began their work one year later, and the Quebec, Ontario, Atlantic, BC and Northern Councils followed after that. These organizations are a cornerstone of Canadians' international development efforts, engaging Canadians through innovative public engagement initiatives, improving development principles, and we are all so thankful and proud of the work that they do for Canadians. Mr. Speaker, next Saturday, Guy Rocher, one of the great thinkers of the Quiet Revolution, is emblematic of secularism in Quebec. It will be his 100th anniversary. This century of wisdom should be celebrated. He's one of the unsung heroes of the Quiet Revolution since he played a role in the Parent Commission, which led to the creation of one of the greatest universities in Quebec and Canada, the network of Quebec universities and the extraordinary network of CEGEPs, which is unique to Quebec. Graduate of Laval, Montreal, and Harvard universities, this sociologist was the first to understand that modernizing our education system is impossible without secularization. This allows us to better understand Quebec. We took inspiration from his calm, his tenacity, and 100 years for a rocher, a French word for rock, isn't old at all. The Honourable Member from Red Deer, Lacombe. Mr. Speaker, after nine years of this NDP Liberal government, Canadians are struggling to make ends meet. This year, Canadians will spend over $46 billion to service this Prime Minister's debt. But the Prime Minister's costly coalition doesn't stop there. On April 1st, these NDP Liberals increased the federal carbon tax by 23%. This increase affects the cost of living for all Canadians, including a major increase in gasoline prices. Mr. Speaker, this Prime Minister is simply not worth the cost. But it's not just Liberals like David Dodge and Bill Morneau that think his spending is out of control. Former Finance Minister John Manley stated his spending balloons inflation and interest rates. Mr. Speaker, Conservatives will vote non-confidence in this budget unless they cap the spending with a dollar-for-dollar -dollar rule to bring down inflation and lower interest rates. Yeah. And for every new dollar spent, the government must find a dollar in savings and immediately pass Bill C-234 in its original form to axe the tax on farmers and farmers. Food. Here, here. Well said. The Honourable Member from Northwest Territories. Mr. Speaker, Wally Firth, my predecessor here as the first Indigenous Member of Parliament from the Northwest Territories, passed away last month at the age of 89 years old. He served as the NDP MP for the Northwest Territories from 1972 to 1979. He was also one of the first Indigenous managers at the Hudson Bay, one of the first Northern Indigenous commercial pilots, and a radio host and a journalist at CBC North. 
Mr. Firth was an advocate for addressing poverty and injustices uh, indigenous people have f suffered. Wally also pushed the federal government to negotiate modern land claim agreements with the Denny and the Inuit. Interesting to note, uh, we're still after the same things 50 years later. Wally did speak with me before his passing to talk about these issues and to catch up on family and friends. He'll be remembered as a trailblazer. He was humble, a great listener with passion for music, who loved to pick up the fiddle. Masi Cho, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, yeah, good job, good job. We should be getting kicked off just to vote now. Okay. Oh, it looks like Lansman's on deck. Yes, Tills Ohio. The Honorable Member from Thornhill. Check it out. After nine years of this Liberal NDP government and their soft on crime policies, Canada's criminal justice system is broken and Canadians feel unsafe in their neighbourhoods. Here's where we're at today. The biggest gold heist in Canadian history. $20 million gone. Imagine. Several suspects uh, involved with gangs and gun running. And they're already out on bail 24 hours later. Wow. Why does this government think the gangsters who steal millions of dollars deserve to be released back into the community? That's right. Yeah. The Honourable Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada. I thank the member opposite for that important question. I point out to her and to other members of this chamber that we passed significant bail reform legislation in this chamber with the cooperation of premiers around the country and law enforcement officials around the country. What I would also point out to the member opposite is that I share her concern for organized criminality. In fact, I share it so much so that the Budget Implementation Act contains measures that will address money laundering and address financing through criminality. I desperately I really hope that that member and all of her colleagues will be supporting that aspect of our legislation and helping us to tackle organized crime and money laundering. Before I continue with question period for the Honourable Member for Thornhill who will want to ask her question, I'm going to ask uh, the member from Grand River Miramichi as well as the member from, uh, uh, from Dufferin Caledon, please, uh, to wait your turn uh, to before uh, taking the floor. Right the there, he's talking to Thornhill. Jake Stewart. Speaker, and, it didn't uh, work because I Liberals believe, do um, think that these Siebel. criminals should be released back into the community because they passed the very bills that made it possible. And they are the reason why gun runners and gangsters who steal millions Millions of dollars in gold get turned back loose into the streets. Did the Prime Minister get a little golden nugget from these criminals to pass his catch and release Bill C-75? When will they finally reverse these policies, protect our communities, and keep criminals in jail where they belong? Yeah. The Honourable Minister of Justice and Attorney General. Mr. Speaker, our resolve to ensure communities are safe is strong. What we did in the past 18 months is we've enacted legislation that addresses the acute causes of crime. What we've done in the past 18 months is ensure that the bail reform system deals with violent, serious offenders, and we had the support of law enforcement right around this country. The other thing that law enforcement has been talking to me and my colleague, the Minister of Public Safety, about is the acute need to address organized criminality in this country. Previous times legislation has been in this chamber, they have voted against such legislative initiatives. They have one more opportunity, but they've already announced they won't be supporting us getting tough with money laundering and organized criminality. The Honourable Member from Thornhill. Speaker, they're out on bail less than 24 hours later. The Liberal incompetence touches so much more than the criminal justice system. You might need a nugget of gold to buy gas in Ontario today. After nine years of this Prime Minister, his carbon tax prices have hiked the cost of gas by 14 cents a litre today. If, you refuse to call, if he refuses to call a carbon tax election, will the Prime Minister put a pause on his punishing hikes over the summer so that Canadians can take a little road trip? Or will he do everyone in this country a favor and take a permanent road trip so the Canadians take a walk, can Trudeau. afford to live. Yeah. Who wants Trudeau to take a walk? The like, Honourable Minister I don't care where, just walk somewhere else. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Eight out of ten. Eight out of ten families receive no, they more don't. in the carbon rebate Fire. than they pay on the carbon price. The reason is that all Creepy the proceeds dude. from the carbon price are sent back to Canadians. Mm -hmm. Wealthier mm -hmm. families mm -hmm. more, pay more, so low-income and middle-class families get more, Mr. Speaker. Eight out of ten families get more from the carbon Eight rebate the than they pay on the carbon price. In addition to that, obviously, that reduces pollution, that reduces the cost of climate change. Look at Patty Hedu back there The Honourable just Member texting. for Bellechasse and Zichemin, Lévy. Mr. Speaker, after nine years of this Prime Minister, the cost of living has reached a truly alarming level. Food banks are busier than ever, criminals have total impunity, and affordable housing is so scarce that Quebecers are forced to live 
in motels, Mr. Speaker. Canadians who can no longer afford housing or even food, that is the reality today. This Prime Minister is simply not worth the cost. Will he show Canadians a little empathy or will he continue to make their living conditions worse, Mr. Speaker? The Honourable Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the number of units of affordable housing created by the Conservative le leader when he was Housing Minister. During his whole mandate for the whole country, it's difficult to talk about empathy when we think of the Conservative leader who created six affordable housing units, one for each six million Canadians during his mandate. There were 170 created in my colleague's writing recently. The Honourable Member for Belchasse les Etchemins Lévy. I'll give him a number. Nine. Nine years of this Liberal government means nine years of inflationary policies, nine years of wasting Canadians' money, and nine years of reckless disregard for them. Money everywhere but in Canadians' pockets, criminals everywhere but in jail, and affordable rents everywhere but in Canada. Why so much failure? The answer is as simple as it is glaring. It's because of this Prime Minister who isn't worth the cost. Can he put an end to the budgetary mess and give a little more thought to Canadians who can't even afford housing because of him? What's up, Gerald? What's up, Gary? How are you guys? Cryptomeria, how are you? I missed a whole bunch of people. Minister True Blue, of Public what's up, Services brother? and Procurement. Jack, Thank you, day. Mr. Speaker. My colleague is talking about affordable housing. Blue, always? Six affordable housing units under the Conservative hey, Terry, leader up? when he was Minister of Housing for his whole mandate, for the whole country. In just her riding, 173. In just her riding, 173 affordable housing units have been created by municipalities with financial help from the Canadian government. As her leader continues to insult Quebec's municipalities, calling them incompetent with six affordable housing units, there are 173 affordable housing units that have been built in her riding. Once again, I invite members to not speak this when guy, they have not been recognized by the Greg speaker. Is a loser. In particular, I am referring to my friend, really? my like, dear I colleague, can't be the only person from that thinks that. Somebody back me up on here. The honourable member for La Prairie. The Prime Minister's budget is a budget of threats. The Prime Minister is threatening the provinces with cuts to housing money if they don't accept federal conditions. He's also threatening cities with cuts to public transit funding if they don't agree to have their zoning rules dictated by him. Funny, these are exactly the same threats proposed by the Conservative leader. Canadians already had someone bossing them around at the federal level without proposing any real solutions. Since the budget, they have a second. As for Quebecers, we're stuck with a liberal conservative coalition. Do we really need that? The Honourable Minister of Transport. Mr. Speaker. Hello, civil play. Come on. The Honourable awesome. Minister of Transport. Mr. Speaker, the Bloc Québécois tells us that housing is important. That's, that's great. It's in the budget. They say that helping youth is important. That's great because that's also in the budget. Seniors are also important to the Bloc. Well, look, Mr. Speaker, they're also in the Nature, budget. What's up? But they're going to do like their Conservative colleagues, Ernest, their great friends, Norm, and they're going to vote against on? it. It's time for the walk to match the talk. Did I say hello, Jimmy? Always a pleasure. The Honourable Member for La Prairie. The ultimate threat of this budget is its pandering. The Liberals' priority isn't housing, it's their re-election. The numbers say it all. If their priority was housing, they wouldn't have budgeted 97% of the billion dedicated to accelerating apartment construction just after the election nor would they have budgeted 91% of the new housing infrastructure fund only after the election. If their priority was housing, they'd be delivering the money now, not after the election. If this isn't their way of saying, vote Liberal, or you won't get a penny, What's up, what Sam is? Adams? How are you? Chug, chug. The Honourable Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Our colleague is quite right. It's not after, it's now that it's happening. 8,000 housing units in Quebec have been built because of the exceptional partnership between the Government of Canada and the Government of Quebec. 8,000 affordable housing units 
is the highest number of affordable housing units built in the history of Quebec because of the extraordinary collaboration between the government of Canada and the government of Quebec. The only problem, Mr. Speaker, is that it, that, uh, that is bad news for the Bloc Québécois. The Honourable Member for Rosemont, La Petite Patrie. Mr. Speaker, the Liberals don't have the courage to take away the big gifts given to big business by the Conservatives. But cutting 5,000 positions in the public service, they don't mind doing that. Fewer public servants means fewer public services. Like the Conservatives, the Liberals are cutting services, but they give billions of dollars to incompetent subcontractors. Just look at Arrive Can. Why not keep public services by getting rid of subcontractors that cost an arm and a leg and don't do the job? The Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Oh, Lord, this isn't Mr. good. Speaker, Anand, we gross. continue to be responsible in the public service, especially with procurement and also with the public sector. The 2024 budget mentions that there will be natural attrition in the public service. We continue to hold consultations with the public service with unions because we know that the public service is here for us and we continue to be here for them. Thank you. The Honourable Member from Vancouver, Kingsway. Mr. Speaker, documents reveal that this government doesn't track job creation from the billions in subsidies they give to corporations. Yeah. So while Canadians struggle to pay rent and buy groceries, the Liberals, like the Conservatives before them, are shoveling billions of dollars each year to big business yeah. with no strings attached. Disgusting. It's bad enough that the Liberals don't make corporations pay their fair share, but handing them money without accountability is scandalous. Why are the Liberals giving these corporations a free ride at the expense of Canadians? The Honourable Minister for Innovation. Mr. Speaker, I am very glad that just the day after the budget, my colleagues give me the opportunity to talk about the great investments that we've been attracting in this country, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Just look, for example, Mr. Speaker, last year, Canada ranked third in the world and one per capita for attracting foreign investment. Just think about NordVault in Quebec, Mr. Speaker, the largest private investment in the province history. Just talk about Volkswagen, Mr. Speaker, in St. Thomas. This is going to change the whole region. We're creating jobs, we're creating prosperity, we're creating opportunities for generation. Think about Windsor, Mr. Speaker, which young. This is the investment we've seen from North Star is going to change. Mr. Speaker, we're going to fight every day for Canadians. Again, order. I'd like to remind members, and I know some members who have raised in the past that they've been concerned about uh, the level of noise in here and speaking out of turn. Let us all uh, restrain ourselves so we can hear the question and the answer to the question from the member from uh, Foothills. After nine years, Canadian farmers know this Prime Minister is not worth the cost. Over the last several weeks, I've received dozens of letters representing tens of thousands of farm families from right across this country. These are grain farmers, ranchers, mushroom growers, fruit and vegetable growers, provincial premiers, and agriculture ministers. They're unanimous. To ensure the sustainability of food production in Canada, they need the NDP Liberal Carbon Tax Coalition to reverse its 23% hike in the carbon tax and pass 234 in its original form. Will the Prime Minister ensure food and farming are affordable and pass 234 in its original form? The Honourable Minister for Agriculture and Agri-Food. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I appreciate my Honourable Colleague's question. Uh, but of course, in the budget, there's been good news, not only for Canadians, but farmers right across the country. For an example, in, uh, enhancing the Livestock Tax Deferral Program, which is a big asset to, to when, when, uh, when ranchers have a downturn with, with, with the climate. And also with the Advanced Payment Program, it's putting a, a $250,000. All these things and many more are so important for, to make sure that Farmers and ranchers stay on the cutting edge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Foothills. I, I'm not sure that it's good news when after nine years of this Prime Minister, demand on food banks 
is at a record high. Exactly. And more and more Canadians can't afford to feed their families. In Prince Edward Island, the Caring Cupboard Food Bank is struggling just to keep its doors open as demand is up 70%. Wow. These are the agriculture minister's own constituents. And what is his response? Increase the carbon tax by 23%, driving food costs even higher. Why will this prime minister not ensure that farming and food is more affordable and pass Bill C-234 in its original form? Here, 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 here. The Honourable Minister for Agriculture and Agri-Food. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I'm kind of surprised to get this question from a man, uh, uh, my colleague who was so interested in agriculture. Quite simply, when they were in power, they slashed a half a billion dollars from agriculture and agri-food. Right. They slashed $200 million for, from the business risk management program. All of these things are so important when agriculture has a downturn. We have reinstated the funds and will continue to support our farmers and ranchers right across the country. The Honourable Member from Barry Innisfil. People in Ontario went into full panic mode last night, lining up to fill up because gas was going up to $1.80 a litre, the highest it's been in two years. 18 cents in every litre of gas is because of this NDP Liberal Prime Minister's carbon tax. And by the time the costly coalition is done, the carbon tax will quadruple, rising 61 cents a litre. After nine years and an extra $10 to fill up overnight, the Prime Minister is not with the co worth the cost. How about cancelling the carbon tax on gas this summer so Canadians can at least enjoy that time-honoured tradition of a road trip? Yeah. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, when the oh Conservatives Lord, blame the cost Vander of living crisis on carbon it's pricing and proven thing. emissions reduction strategies, they're only serving the greedy corporate interests of billionaire grocery and oil and gas executives. There's no rebate on the provincial gas tax that Danielle Smith jacked up on Albertans on April 1st. There's no rebate on the summer fuel surcharge or excessive oil and gas profits. But the Canada carbon, carbon rebate is four quarterly payments per year as an incentive to use a little less and get a little bit more tax-free cash in your account four times a year. These Conservatives don't have a plan for affordability. They don't have a plan for the environment, they consistently prioritize the corporate interests of their greedy oil and gas masters over the needs of everyday Canadians. Order. Order. Comrades. The Honourable Member from Barry Innisville. If that member is so confident in the carbon tax, I dare him to convince the Prime Minister to call an election. Oh, awesome. That's pretty fun. The increase caused so much pain in long lines of gas stations across Barry Innisville last night. Costco was so busy that cars were lined up in live traffic on Mapleview. The NDP Liberal government plans on quadrupling the carbon tax to 61 cents a litre. The lineups and panic across the country shows that after nine years, Canadians can no longer afford this costly coalition. Why don't they just come and live with reality and axe the carbon tax so Canadians can afford life? Hey, Joe, Joe, what's up? Good to see you. The Honourable Prime Minister, Secretary to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change. There was an election on the carbon tax. In fact, there was three of them. We won them all. Oh, in last goodness. election, they ran our Arrogance. promise with Aaron O'Toole. Remember that? Remember his little cover? He cared about the environment for a change. Conservatives all of a sudden cared about climate change and they were going to use carbon pricing to lower emissions. Well, they lost. They still all ran on that promise to price carbon, but when this new member of, uh, of Parliament, the leader of the Conservatives, the, uh, the, the Petro puppet of Carlton, <laughs> came in play. Oh, so Mr. Speaker's going to step in. Look at, look at McKinney. Look at McKinney. Look at him. He's a jackass. I don't like McKinney at all. Colleagues, comrades, behave, sit in your place. We can be pointed, Act like we can children. be passionate, listen, and we can be uh, many things. But what we must always remain to do is to make sure that we are carrying ourselves He's the and we refer to each other uh, politely. Uh, group, the honourable member, the honourable parliamentary yeah. secretary, Joking. knows that. I'm going to ask him just to withdraw that part of his statement, and then he has. Five seconds to finish oh, this question. Throw in an extra five seconds. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. These conservatives can dish out, but they ran on carbon pricing, and they've got no integrity for fighting it at this stage. Talk 
talk about integrity, man. That word shouldn't be in that loser's mouth. Like, uh, I, I did ask the honorable the liberals are getting to me just to withdraw that part of this me down. statement so that we I could stay on the whole morning right watching them lie right to my face. The secretary, like, doing editing or whatever, and. Mr. Speaker, I uh, apologize for causing a little bit of disruption. It seems that the Conservatives are having... What is that? It's a sincere apology. No, he's talking... Honourable member yes. did apologize like, for causing disruption uh, in the House. The Honourable... Speaker can't handle it now. He's not fit for the job. So he resorts to hitting his little button. He likes playing with his own button. Who doesn't, right? But, like, not on national television. Like, As colleagues know, I see that a member is, a very respected member is up on her feet as she knows that there is uh, no points of order during question period. However, <laughs> uh, the, I would suggest that she raises this after question period. We'll see. We'll deal with She's it then. shutting her down. Who, who got up? Member, Who's standing? Um, Hastings, Looks Lennox like Tracy Gray. Like, I, 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 I saw Tracy Gray standing. This government came into oh. power. Road trips used Cram. to be a staple vacation Cram. for Cram. many Canadian uh, families. Newman, Gas prices in Ontario skyrocketed overnight, pushing a buck eighty. This is the highest price in two years. The Liberal NDP Prime Minister's carbon tax is now at 18 cents a litre of gas, and when he quadruples the carbon tax, it will shoot up even higher. After nine years, Canadians are convinced this Prime Minister is not worth the cost. Mr. Speaker, will the Prime Minister cancel the carbon tax on gas this summer so Canadians can afford a family vacation? Here, here, here. The Honourable Minister for Workforce Development. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let's bring some sanity and fact into this conversation. Dan McTeague, who is the president of the advocacy group Canadians for Affordable Energy, said in past years the switch over to summer blend fuel typically results in an increase in fuel of about 6 to 10 cents per litre. In warmer weather, refiners are required to make this change so that the fuel is more stable. There's good news, Mr. Speaker. Where's Prices the good news, will come down Randy? about 5 cents by Friday. By September, even lower. This has nothing to do with the price on pollution and everything to do with theatrics by the Conservatives. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Honourable Member. The Honourable Member from Hastings, Lennox, and Addington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Completely out of touch. Yep. There's debt, chaos, hardship and stress hitting Canadians and it is the policies of this Liberal NDP government that have directly contributed to the pain they are feeling. The reality is the family budget has shrunk and family vacations are a thing of the past for many. A dollar eighty for gas this morning. Mr. Speaker, will the Prime Minister cancel the carbon tax and take a permanent vacation so Canadians can afford a small summer road trip? They just want him to take a walk. We don't want, well, maybe some the people want something bad to happen to us. I personally don't. We go through this every year. We change away. from winter blend to summer blend, and we're required to do so so that the fuel stays stable in our vehicles. Mr. Speaker, here's what else Dan McTeague had to say. The most important ingredient in fuel is alkalites, and alkalites are extremely expensive right now. Mr. McTeague said the good news is there will be a five cents a litre drop at the pumps by this Friday. We're fighting climate change. This has nothing to do with it. Pure theatrics from Conservatives to scare people while we have the backs of Canadians from coast to coast to coast. The Honourable Member for Drummond. Mr. Speaker, on page 74 of Budget 2024, it's titled Halal Mortgages. This isn't the first time the federal government has considered Sharia-compliant mortgages. In 2009, CMHC had commissioned a study on the subject. The reaction of the Muslim Canadian Congress at the time had been clear. I quote its founder, Tarek Fattah, this halal mortgages targets vulnerable and marginalized Muslims who are told that if they do business with non-Muslims, they will go to hell. My question is simple, Mr. Speaker. Who exactly is this measure aimed at? The Honourable Minister of National Revenue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is a financial tool 
that has not been proposed by the government, but that exists. What we've said is that we are going to study this matter to ensure that it is done following the rules. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Drummond. Oof. Mr. Speaker, on Tuesday, the Quebec Lieutenant was lecturing us. Canada is a secular country. We care about secularism too. We're Quebecers. They just want to pick a fight. You know the drill, Mr. Speaker. So if the Liberals are so in favor of secularism, can they tell us why they want to move the election date due to a religious holiday and why they want to introduce elements of Sharia into the mortgage rules of this supposedly secular country? Oh. The Honourable Minister of National Revenue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Once again, this is a financial tool that is absolutely not put forward by our government. We are looking at the product. We want to know if it is fair, if it follows the rules. We are just going to study this matter. There's no intention from our government to support. We just want to make sure it's fair. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Drummond. Then why is it in the budget, Mr. Speaker? I don't understand. Anyways, Mr. Speaker, we are witnessing a clash of values. While the Minister of Justice intends to use Quebecers' money to challenge Quebec's law on the secular nature of the state, the Liberals are thinking of incorporating more religions into Canadian law. I will once again quote Tarek Fatah, founder of the Muslim Canadian Congress on Halal Mortgages. We see this as the financial front of the Islamist movement. These are serious words. Will the government admit that it is not defending secularism, but rather bringing more and more religion into the affairs of the state? <laughs> the Honourable Minister of National Revenue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Once again, we are talking about financial tools that are available on the market. This is in no way a product proposed by our government. We want to ensure that this financial product that is on the market is not breaking the rules. Thank you. Member from Leeds Grenville, Thousand All right, here it goes. Barrett's fun. After nine years of this NDP Liberal Prime Minister, he's not worth the cost or the corruption of his $60 million arrive scam. The Prime Minister's favorite scamster told the House yesterday that his home had been raided by the RCMP for his role in this latest scandal. But he also told the House that the NDP Liberal government han hasn't asked for a penny back of the ill-gotten gains. Now, the House has ordered it. Why hasn't this Prime Minister in Enforced it. When will Canadians get their money back? It's a good question. People want to know that. We're never going to get our money back. Speaker, as my like honourable friend answer. knows, there are internal audits being conducted by the CBSA. The RCMP are looking into this matter. The Auditor General had done a report, and we've accepted the recommendations. And my colleague from Public Services and Procurement has changed many of the rules around these types of contracts. Mr. Speaker, we've also said from the beginning, anybody who abused taxpayers' money will face the consequences. And of course, the government will always seek to recover taxpayers' money that was spent inappropriately. The Honourable Member for Leeds Grenville, Thousand Island and Rideau Lakes. Well, I'm pleased to hear from the latest candidate to be the next leader of the Liberal Party that he's interested in getting Canadians their money back because the current Prime Minister has so far refused. And that's what we heard from GC Strategies frontman yesterday after telling us that for playing his role in the Prime Minister's latest scandal, his house has been raided, but the Prime Minister has still failed to get Canadians their money back. The House has ordered it, and we just want to know when the Prime Minister and the next person auditioning for his job are going to enforce it. When do Canadians get the cash back? Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Speaker, again, my Honourable Friend knows that there are a series of internal audits being conducted with respect to this matter. He referred to the RCMP that are also seized with many of these issues. They took a certain action yesterday, which we heard about in this House as well, Mr. Speaker. I think the Honourable Member should have some confidence that those who have abused taxpayers' money will face the consequences. And if taxpayers' money has been misplaced or mishandled, of course the government will seek to recover those funds. The Honourable Member for Megantic Lerab. Uh. Berthold's going to be doing the some Prime Minister en Francais. And allies in the bloc should be ashamed of having voted to grant millions more for Rive Can, a decision that made the owners of GC Strategies multimillionaires. Kristen Firth, 
co-founder of GC Strategies, said yesterday that the Prime Minister has made no move to recover the money wasted on his Arrive Can app. Arrive Can cost $60 million. Yesterday, the Prime Minister ordered his troops not to ask questions and not to seek reimbursement from GC Strategies. The clock is ticking. When will the Prime Minister give Canadians back their money wasted on Arrive Can? The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, as I said to our colleague in the past, of course, he knows very well that there are investigations underway, including by the RCMP. There are internal verifications underway. My colleague, the Minister of Public Services and Procurement, has changed some rules following the Auditor General's report. And we've always said that anyone who has abused taxpayer money will have to face consequences. So Genghis Khan, and of course, the Genghis government Tron. will undertake the necessary processes to recover that money. The Honourable Member from Hamilton Centre. Mr. Speaker, Ontarians woke up this morning to find out that they got mugged by corporate oil and gas greed today. Gas prices are up 14 cents to a dollar 80 at the pumps. Now, this Liberal government almost found the courage to tax the profits of the oil and gas corporations, but buckled when after their lobbyists told them not to. So, both Liberals and Conservatives, we know, will always protect the record profits of the oil and gas corporations. So when will this Liberal government finally find the spine to say no to the lobbyists and actually stand up for hard-working Canadians? This Matt Green is also a wuss. Like, the Honourable Minister for Innovation. Mr. Speaker, usually I say we will take no, no from the Conservative, but this time I'll say that from the NDP. Mr. Speaker, Canadians watching at home know that we have been fighting for them every single day, Mr. Speaker. Every member on this side of the House wakes up in the morning to work for Canadians to improve their lives, to make sure that we stabilize prices, Mr. Speaker. We introduced the largest reform on competition in this country, Mr. Speaker, something that we should all be proud of because that is the most consequential thing to help Canadians not only for this generation but for generations to come. The law. The Honourable Member from Lady Smith, the Nanaimo Lady Smith. Mr. Speaker, as wildfires okay. devastate Canadian communities, the need for sustainable, clean energy is greater than ever. Yet, the Liberals continue to side with oil and gas and delay on placing a strong emissions cap on big polluters. The Conservatives, on the other hand, are happy to sit back and let the planet burn. New Democrats know that immediate action is needed to tackle the climate crisis. Why do the Liberals keep caving to big oil and refuse to enforce an emissions cap to save our kids' future? Here, here. The Honourable Minister for Employment and Workforce Development. Mr. Speaker, I would invite the New Democrat caucus and their leader to find the courage of their own convictions and come back to supporting us on a price on pollution. We are staying in the lane on fighting carbon, on fighting pricing on pollution each and every day. We're going to make sure that we have a planet that will be here for our kids and our grandkids. We will have a price on pollution. Eight out of ten Canadians will get more money back. That's what we set to do. We've run three elections on it. We're going to keep doing that, Mr. Speaker. We're going to defend Canadians. We're going to defend the planet. We're going to do it in a way that makes Canadians better off. We should go for a walk with Trudy. It's just time, guys. We need a change, right? Like, oh, Fergus is taking a stand again. Order. Order. Comrades. The Honourable Member from Guelph. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As the Chair of the Science and Research Committee and the Member for Guelph, I'm really excited about the investments in science in the nope. recent budget. Researchers and scientists across Canada have a vital role in developing innovation and knowledge. Can the Minister of Innovation, Science and Industry Imagine highlight the important investments our government at, is making uh, in our science and research space that will support students and generations of researchers to come? Tough question. Tough question. The Honourable Minister for Innovation. Speaker, I'd like to first thank my colleague for his leadership on research and science. Mr. Speaker, our budget has shown that we have vision and ambition for science and research right in this country. 
previous two speakers, because on this side of the hall, we know that the science of today is the economy of tomorrow. What's up, we Charlene have announced Hopper, how are historic you? investment in infrastructure because we want to make sure that we would have state-of-the-art facilities for our researchers in this country. But more importantly, Mr. Speaker, we have made an historic investment in grants to support our researcher, our young students, and the next generation, Mr. Speaker. With our investment, we know that science in this country will continue to make sure that we have prosperity for generations to come. Good job. Good job, Vincent. The Honorable Member from Calgary, Midnapore. All right. Yesterday, Cousy. Christian Firth of GC Strategies confirmed his home was raided by the RCMP. GC Strategies proposed a contract to the Deputy Prime Minister's former Chief of Staff and current Liberal Campaign Director, Jeremy Broadhurst. Wow. This contract led to Tuesday's raid on Christian Firth's home. So can the Deputy Prime Minister confirm her communication on a contract proposal that led to an RCMP raid yesterday? Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Public, Servi sorry, Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As our colleague from Public Safety has made clear repeatedly yep. in the last few minutes, this is a matter under investigation, both internally and by the RCMP. It would be totally inappropriate for politicians here, here. anywhere in this House to try to pretend that it would be better than those partners and the RCMP to do that type of work. The Honourable Member from Calgary, Midnapur. Mr. Speaker, I'll tell you what's inappropriate. The Arrive Can app is under RCMP investigation, but we now know that there are two RCMP investigations connected to GC strategies. The raid on Christian Firth's house two days ago raises more concerns about both contracts, one that we now know has a connection to the Deputy Prime Minister's office. Wow. After nine years, GC wow. Strategies has been paid more than a wow. hundred million dollars wow. by this Liberal government. So will the Deputy Prime Minister cooperate with the RCMP investigation? Yeah. Yeah. Good, good the Honourable Minister for Public Works, Public Services and Procurement. Merci, Monsieur le Président. J'ai déjà. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I've already answered the question in English, so I'll do so in French as well. Indeed. That's we know why. that internal inquiries are taking place on this matter. The biggest lies and in the AG en report, we now know that significant measures were brought into place and have been brought into place after the report. It would also be completely inappropriate for politicians in this House to think that they can do better than these organizations, especially the RCMP. A member from Sherwood Park, Park. Oh, right. This is hot. The Prime man. Minister's arrive scam led to unprecedented testimony before this House Jeez, of Commons, fine. which the Liberal House leader tried to shut down. And no wonder, this scam, which the NDP and Liberals voted for, cost taxpayers at least $60 million. Wow. Parliament ordered the government to pay the money back, but Liberals have not even asked for it to be returned. Now the RCMP have come knocking. After nine years, this Prime Minister is not worth the cost, the corruption, or the crime. Will the Prime Minister finally follow the direction of Parliament and get back the Arrive Scam cash. The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, my Honourable Friend knows that this government always works collaboratively with Absolutely. Parliament. We've done so in many cases. In fact, parliamentary committees have also looked into this matter, and government officials have been, of course, available to answer all their questions and provide documents. As my colleague, the Minister of Public Services and Procurement, made clear, Mr. Speaker, there are internal audits taking place. The RCMP are also seized. With this issue, we think it would be appropriate to allow these investigations to conclude. And I can assure you, Mr. Speaker, the government will always take steps to recuperate taxpayers' money that was inappropriately expended and hold those accountable that have abused taxpayers' money. Right up. The Honourable Member from Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan. Mr. Speaker, they haven't cooperated because this House voted to ask for the money to be paid back. And Christian Firth testified that this government has not taken any steps to seek the return of the money. After nine years, it's clear that this Prime Minister is presiding over a severely incontinent contracting system where money constantly flows Close to NDP Liberal insiders. Canadians need a government they can depend on to stop the crime and end the corruption. Again, will the Prime Minister follow the direction of this Parliament and ask the Arrive scammers to return the money? Return the money! The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. 
Mr. Speaker, my honorable colleague uh, has just repeated his previous question. Yeah. I'll give him the same answer. This government always takes the use of taxpayers' money extremely seriously. Absolutely. We have said that if taxpayers' money has been misplaced or mishandled, of course the government will ask mm -hmm. that that money be returned and take the steps appropriate to recuperate that money. And in the case of individuals, my colleague may have taken note of the RCMP action yesterday, in the case of individuals who have abused taxpayers' money, of course the RCMP will take the steps necessary to investigate these matters. It's a given. The Honourable Member for Joliet. Mr. Speaker, this Liberal budget doesn't just doesn't just represent the end of any respect more, for jurisdiction. Uh, it also represents the end of any level it. of it competence was pretty in exciting politics. There, like, Ottawa is trying to impose its priorities without uh, even thinking about minutes. whether it makes sense. For example, building 40-floor apartment towers near schools in neighborhoods which it knows nothing about, or creating standards for skilled trades without knowing anything about it. Same thing for long-term care. Why not let competent people take care of issues that are in their field of jurisdiction? The Honourable Minister of Transport. Mr. Speaker, the Bloc Québécois should show some courage. It should tell us exactly what part of the budget they object to. Investing in housing? Do they object to helping to feed kids so they're not hungry at school? Are they against investments to help municipalities in our rural regions? What exactly do they object to? They should have the courage to say so, because right now they don't dare come out and say exactly what they don't like. They're just asking, they're just acting like their best friends right next to them in the House. They don't have the courage to tell us what they don't like. They just want to vote against the budget. The Honourable Member for Joliet. Well, Mr. Speaker, we are against interference in our jurisdiction. If the Liberals want to do pol Quebec politics, then they should run for the Liberal Party of Quebec. Otherwise, they should take care of things at the federal level. There's plenty to do. They should transfer money for housing instead of negotiating until 2025. They should put an end to the two-tier system for seniors. They should refund Quebec for asylum seekers. They should reform EI, as they've been promising since 2015. They should stop the fossil fuel industry from spoiling the fight against climate change. They should simply do their job. When will they? The Honourable Minister of Public Services and Procurement. My colleague is a distinguished economist, Mr. Speaker. He knows that it's important for everyone to work together to take care of Canadians, including Quebecers, who are struggling these days. So, of course, he'll be very happy to see that $6 billion have been invested in Quebec over four years. Quebec is very happy about it. It's enabled 35,000 new childcare spots to be opened up. As an economist, as I am, he knows that that's very good for gender equality, for reducing poverty, and for helping our children develop, all while respecting provincial jurisdiction. The Honourable Member from Edmonton Mill Woods. I know we have all heard the horror stories on how bad auto theft has gotten in this country after nine years of this NDP Liberal Peace government's right soft here. on crime Came policies. Up. And now we have reports coming out of Toronto that a good Samaritan had pulled over to help somebody in medical distress and while he was helping them, his car was stolen. That's how broken this country has become that a car is stolen every six minutes and violent carjackings are on the rise. Now, since they're not going to do anything about it, when will they just get out of the way and let a common sense conservative government come in and stop the crime? The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, my honourable friend knows that this government takes that very worrisome Absolutely. rise in criminality very seriously. I had a very good conversation last week with my counterpart in Ontario, the Solicitor General. We agreed on a series of measures that we can continue to do it's together with local He's police forces, to the Ontario to his provincial his police bar, that are sure. doing important work in this Pretty area. Sure. And of course, the RCMP is always a partner with the Canadian Pretty Border sure. Services Agency around transnational organized crime. Mr. Speaker, we'll continue to do everything possible in collaboration with our partners to bring this worrisome trend down. Yeah. The Honourable Member for Charlebourg saint charles Mr. Speaker, we learned in the media that a Montreal police officer had to fire on an auto thief who was trying to run him over. These thieves are more and more reckless. They're not afraid of the justice system. That's why our leader has presented a common sense plan. 
in order to increase sentences for auto thieves. Will the Prime Minister listen to this and crack down on auto theft? The Honorable Minister of Justice, there are two things I want to say, Mr. Speaker. First of all, as soon as C-75 came into this House, this very member voted against the bill, which would have increased sentences for auto theft. Now, here in the budget, we have unveiled an increase in sentences for auto theft. But this member and his leader have already said that they are against our budget and against our efforts to reduce auto theft. The Honorable Member for Charlebourg, haute saint charles On the contrary, Mr. Speaker, I think the Minister of Justice has forgotten that because of C5 and C75, with its catch and release system, auto thieves and other criminals in Montreal have nothing to be afraid of. They know that they can operate with impunity. They'll just be set free right away. That's what we see with C-75. Would the Minister of Justice or the PM answer the question, will they increase sentences for auto thieves so that they actually have something to be scared of and so that they finally stop stealing cars in Montreal? The Honorable Minister of Justice and Attorney General, just to be very clear, for constituents of this member, when C-75 was in this House, we proposed including sentences from 18 to 24 months for auto theft, and yet this member and all of his colleagues voted against that. And in this budget, we're not just going to change the criminal code, we're also going to change penalties for money laundering. Do you think he's and yet do my colleague and that? all of his conservative Ron colleagues have already crook, said they will right? vote like, against it. An it's very hard crook. to understand what he's talking about. Organized crime. Uh, like, uh, Mr. Speaker, I just don't like eliminating myself. violence against indigenous women Nor and girls, two-spirit and gender diverse Loosens. people is an urgent priority in Canada. Many have been calling for the implementation of a red dress alert to notify the public when an red indigenous woman, alert, girl, eh? or two-spirit person goes missing. A little too late for that now, Can the now, Honourable there. Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations Darwin? update the House on how the government is advancing these efforts? The Honourable Minister for stunned. Crown Indigenous Relations. Mr. Speaker, the Gary, ongoing Gary's national the crisis Look at how must come to an end. No one knows this better than the families of those who have lost their loved ones to this crisis. That is why we're working with Indigenous partners and leveraging Budget 2024 investment of $1.3 million to co-develop a regional red dress alert system. From housing to Indigenous policing, Budget 2024 continues to make progress on the he systemic kind of change up. needed to put this crisis to an end once and for all. I want to thank the member for that important question and for advocacy. We will continue to do this work, important work, with Indigenous partners and colleagues across the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm so proud just because he like, finished his piece. The Honourable piece. Member from Barry Stroll, Water, Oro Medante. Mr. Speaker, Who's after this nine years like of this NDP fridge. Liberal government, this Prime Minister is not worth the cost or the crime. Wow, Today Shipley's huge. Today we learned that thieves who stole $20 million in the biggest gold heist in Canadian history are out on bail. Right. This is Looks because like the Liberal government's shameful Bill C-75 that allows offenders to be in jail in the morning and back on the streets in the evening. Will the Prime Minister reverse his bail over jail policies in Bill C-75? Good question. The Honourable Minister of Justice and Attorney General. Mr. Speaker, the bill that the, the Conservative Party loves to discuss in this context actually included things such as increased penalties for auto theft, a key criminality issue that is seizing Canadians right now. It's an issue that we need to all address. I find it a little bit disturbing and a little bit hypocri hypocritical, actually, that that member and all of his colleagues actually voted against that bill at the time, which would have helped augment the crimes against uh, people who steal, who steal uh, automobiles. But yet they have another opportunity, but unfortunately, they've already declared that vis-a-vis -vis the further efforts we are taking to address automobile theft, they're continuing to vote against. The Honourable Member from Kamloops, Thompson Caribou. After nine years of NDP Liberals, offenders like Bernardo and Magnata are living better than many Canadians True. with cable, canteen and a beautiful gym. This is at a time when Canadians are having trouble when it comes to heating, eating and housing. Breaking news, Mr. Speaker, the Correctional Officers Union tells us that crime is thriving. Not on the streets, but in jail, with drones dropping drugs and serious weapons. 
When will this government realize that violent offenders shouldn't have access to these things? Who's running corrections? The Honorable Minister for Public Safety. It's pretty fun, but like, Mr. Speaker, my Honorable pretty fun. friend knows very well the that the safety not. of the men and women who work in the correctional service is of paramount importance to the government. Well, I have met with representatives of the leader. union. I talked to the, the administration at the Correctional Service of Canada often about what steps we can take to give them the technologies and the tools necessary to protect the people who work in our correctional system. And Mr. Speaker, we will always do everything we can to keep these institutions safe for the brave women and men who do this difficult work for Canadians. Right on. Here, here. Good on. The Honourable Member from Fort McMurray, Cold Lake. Mr. Speaker, top BC police are sounding Goodrich alarm bells great. that drug decriminalization, a dangerous and radical NDP Liberal experiment, has handcuffed their ability to keep our communities safe. Under this dangerous social experiment, drug use is legal in hospitals, playgrounds, parks and beaches. The Deputy Chief of Vancouver Police said due to decriminalization, there is nothing they can do about it. Will the Prime Minister end his dangerous and deadly drug decriminalization experiment. Yes or no? Pretty simple, yes or no. Uh, the Honourable Minister for Mental Health and Addiction. Mr. Speaker, what the Please. member chooses to ignore or not listen to when law enforcement seen a good time also in says is yet. that They've been crystal clear. Fentanyl is driving the crisis, and too many Canadians are dying as a result of it. People are dying alone, Mr. Speaker, and they're only concerned about one thing, misusing the facts. I will be meeting with my counterpart in BC and law enforcement partners to discuss how we can further work together to address diversion. But Mr. Speaker, diversion is illegal. The member knows that. And we expect law enforcement to do their job, as well as the regulatory colleges, and act swiftly to address it. We are working together, Mr. Speaker. Where are they? Where are you? What is your name again? Sachs, the Honourable Member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Take a walk Thank with Mr. Trudeau. Speaker, small and medium-sized businesses are an integral part of Canada's economy. They employ about 65% of Canada's workers. Recognizing that small businesses deserve additional supports, it's important for us to make doing business more affordable for entrepreneurs. Can the Minister of Small Business tell us about the measures in Budget 2024 that will help entrepreneurs in Kitchener-Conestoga and across Canada? The Honourable Minister for Small Businesses. Oh, no. Mr. Speaker, I thank my honourable colleague for thank that question. You. As a former small business entrepreneur myself, I know the importance of affordability for entrepreneurs. So I'm glad that through Budget 2024, our government is committed to delivering $2.5 billion like to small businesses uh, and to 600,000 small businesses across Canada through the Canada Carbon Rebate. Reports say that small businesses are directly impacted by, 60% uh, of them are directly impacted by climate change. And while the official opposition continues to want to cut the Canada carbon rebate, on this side of the house, we're going to continue fighting climate change while putting uh, money back into the pockets of Canadians and small businesses. The Honourable Member from Winnipeg Centre. Mr. Speaker, while the oh, finance God. minister celebrates so-called feminist right. policies yeah. in this year's budget, in rural Manitoba, the Liberals have cut all funding for counselling and legal services for survivors of sexual violence at the Survivors Hope Crisis Centre. Time and again, this Prime Minister shows that he is a fake feminist. Meanwhile, fake the Conservative leader good. undermines women's rights at every corner, cozying up to extreme misogynists like Alex Jones. Yeah. Will the minister uh, do what's right and restore funding for survivors right there, at the though. Hope Crisis Center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That tactic will not Secretary. work. It's not going to fool Canadians. Speaker, we know there's always more Who's to this? do, and I really appreciate the member opposite and the work that she does on the status of women Never committee. She is a true advocate for women, but I will point to the fact that this budget does cover contraceptives for women. Nine million. Canadians will be able to make this choices woman seems on to their be bodies because of this investment. We've got investments against workplace sexual harassment. We've got investments to what have more childcare spaces in this country and more investments to support queer and trans people in this country, Mr. Speaker. Oh, Awkward in her own dress. The Honourable Member for Richmond North Basca. Mr. Speaker, the government has brought back in a requirement for most Mexicans to have a visa in order to come to Canada. 
people with valid work permits can come to Canada with just an electronic authorization, but members of their family and their children are not included. They need to get a visitor visa for their children, but that takes much longer. A mother in my riding lost her job because she couldn't come back to Canada without leaving her child in Mexico. It's a lose-lose lose, lose situation for the worker, her family, and for the business. Will the Minister of Immigration do something about the situation promptly? The Honourable Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship. I'd like to ask the member to come see me after this session in order to discuss the situation. Now we know that people get their visa in Mexico. That's the rule, and if there are any exceptions that need to be discussed, I would encourage him to come see me. Following discussions, following discussions that's, that's among representatives of all parties this, uh, in the House, I understand there is an agreement to observe a moment of silence. I now invite... It's over, guys. We're not going to do the moment of silence here. I now invite the House to rise and observe a minute of silence. So what we are going to do, I've got a couple of videos that I do want you to watch. I'll be watching here with you, but I just want you to watch the videos. And I think you'll find them kind of fun. They're very quick and simple, uh, but we're going to do that right now. So a couple of videos just to check out. Everywhere I go, I'll they want change, real change. And I've been listening. When you look out at the economy these days, everywhere I go, all across the country, Canadians tell me they want change, real change. And I've been listening. When you look out... Hey everyone, Michelle Ferrer here, Member of Parliament for Peterborough Kawartha. We're at Hawes Acres now, uh, Brian Hawes, incredible guy. I mean, what are you, what are you generating, Brian, in terms of, uh, you do grain, crop, you got a pretty big operation here. Well, it's small in the big scale. He's things, humble. But, he but feeds people. We, yeah, well, we, we grow wheat and corn and uh, beans. We do a lot of edible beans. Um, okay. Instead of just crushing. Family farm, been in the Oh, family yeah, farm. family farm. Well, my grandfather came over from Germany in 1930. <laughs> That's when it started. So. so just the other day. So the reason we're here, we're talking about Bill C-234 and the impact it's going to have. This is what the Conservatives are calling on. So Bill C-234 is asking, um, demanding that the Liberals uh, pass this bill in its original form to remove the carbon tax on farmers, in particular grain farmers. Because what you see here, so the corn's going to come in here, it's wet. Then it's going to come over into this dryer. And the dryer has to use uh, fuel to dry it. So yeah. it's going to use propane. It takes energy. So yeah, propane. We don't have natural gas or we would use it if we had it here. But it's irrelevant. It's the same. So there's carbon tax on this. Tremendous amount, yeah, yeah. Okay, and so I was looking at some of the the, the stats you were giving me here. This was wild. Yeah, me. it was of April first. Uh, the the carbon tax went up by is up to eighty dollars a, a ton. ton. So that would have in would have put it in the last two years probably put sixty percent on our on our drying cost. Okay, so this is wild. So for the people watching at home. How does that impact them buying food at the grocery store? It, it, it's incredible because it's not just like that's one spot where we get nailed with carbon tax. So when you when you bring your wheat in, for example, and you dry the wheat, boom, carbon tax. And then when we truck the wheat to the elevator, carbon tax. And then when the elevator trucks it to the mill, there's another carbon tax to make the flour. And then when it goes to make the bread, there's another carbon tax. And the 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 freaking loaf of bread has to have wrapped in something. There was carbon tax on that. Then it has to get to the warehouse. Another carbon tax on the fuel, for example. And on and on until it gets to your grocery store shelf, which has put a loaf of bread up by, I forget how many percent it's gone up in the last... 75% is one of the readings I heard in, in 2022. Incredible. Like, that's just, that's an incredible number. It's wild when yeah. people are trying to just feed their families. Yes, yeah. and everything we do has carbon tax on it. No different than anybody else. Like every time you move, I mean, this hat has carbon tax on it. I don't know how many times. Like everything has carbon tax. And then there's a tax 
on the carbon tax. Well, sure. Then they you pay the HST on the carbon tax. It's phenomenal. Uh, it's it's is ass. Oh, <laughs> you can say it. You can say it. It's fine. But I think so. That's why we're demanding this. And I, I guess what I would say to everybody is: so Bill C two three four has to be uh, passed in its original form in the budget that's coming up. That's why we're doing this video. We're challenging you to message every MP you know, every farmer you know, get them to reach out to their local media. I still Absolutely. think there's a a disconnect. People don't actually understand how significant this is on their day-to-day -day life. I really believe that people don't grasp the gravity of this carbon tax on your exactly right day-to-day -day life. It, it, it affects absolutely every facet of your life. Everything you own, everything you buy, everything you do is carbon taxed, compounded, on top of more tax. I don't even know that you can quantify the exact I don't know number. how you could. I actually don't think you can. And it's really bad because we're trying to compete, of course, with every other country that doesn't have a carbon tax their products come in i mean sadly we we buy a lot of our parts out of the u.s at least we only pay a bit of carbon tax on freight so you're like actually it's, really it's, deterring supporting local well it's it's awful yeah i mean it, it deters local you try as best you can but at the end of the day we're down to the wire i mean we got to survive so the last thing i would ask you to talk to is because farmers to me are the biggest stewards of the land Absolutely. They're the most concerned with the environment. They're the most concerned with stewardship. Well, because if we screw this up, we are out of business. So you're going to do it right. It's the most efficient. Like there's what, 48,000 farmers in Ontario alone. Yes. I think it's about 836,000 workers that are employed by just, just in Ontario. Just in Ontario. And yes, I mean, people say, oh, well, you do this, you waste that. I waste nothing. We do exactly what we have to. We fertilize. We've gone. We've got better practices, so we'll do minimum or no till if we can. We make sure our nitrogen is injected right into the ground beside the beside the the seed, so that it doesn't leach out. And then we'll double apply it, so you don't get any leaching. Like we do it as efficiently as we possibly can because we have to. We are stewards of the land. We are environmentally friendly as we possibly can be to survive. I think I really challenge you, especially if you live in the in the urban centers of Canada and you may have never visited a farm. There's a lot of people. We take it for granted because we live in farm world. I'm, we're very fortunate. Yep. But there's a ton of people out there that still don't know how this actually gets your food gets from the farm to the table. And this carbon tax is directly impacting your ability to feed your family. So please, again, I, I request you to write to your MP, write to your local media, tell them, say we want Bill C-234 passed in its original form. And Perfect. Brian, thank you so much for feeding thank us. Thank you, my Michelle. Friend. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it.